16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo Genesis Duds. 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo Genesis Duds. Genesis Duds. Genesis Duds. Genesis Duds. Genesis Duds. Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo? Everybody seated? All right. Welcome back. Half Glass Gaming. I am Julian. I am the moderator of this ensemble. This ensemble. Les incompetents. <laughs> That's just Josh. It's me. And uh, there's the ref. I am the Reverend, a time uh-huh. lord from Gallifrey, and I am going to get you all out of here alive. And, of course, fist on chin Mandy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi. I gotta apologize. It's... I'm apologizing for putting my fist on my chin. <laughs> Maybe if you were biting your thumb. I mean, yeah, that's what I was go- going for. The, not biting my thumb at you. Just okay. biting my thumb. Cool. It's I a Shakespeare have. joke. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just a line. Uh, no, I, Julia, yes, it's it not is. my humor. I can't you take were... credit for this. It's funny. I think of, um, what's his name? Uh, Jamie Kennedy. I bite my thumb, sir, but I do not bite my thumb at you. <laughs> what a middle school thing to do. <laughs> Be like, oh, I wasn't flicking you off. I just was stretching my middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> it was driving home the fact that Romeo and Julia is about a bunch of teenagers. Right. Despite casting decisions. So Julian's got a cool new hat. Cozy. It's a creeper. He's got it's the green. It's literally a creeper. Uh, right. Literally, that's what it is. It's got the green, like, creeper Minecraft face mm-hmm. on a hat. Mm-hmm. And so now he could pull it over his face completely yeah. and oh, make, you know, like when he wants to rob a bank and everyone will think that a creeper just came in yeah. and robbed the bank. They'll just and go into the, the bank and go, realize, The day will be up when right. you blow up the bank afterwards. They'll <laughs> right. be like, wait a minute, that the bank isn't blown up. It wasn't a creeper at all. It was just a guy in a ski mask. Yeah, my brother got it for me for an extremely late birthday gift. Speaking of birthday gifts, uh, Julian and I both had birthdays in March, yeah. which is, you know, in the rear view mirror at this point. But uh, mm-hmm. we both got 49-inch TVs. The same 49-inches. Yeah. And they're great. And they're fantastic. Man, gaming on them. It's just been so great. I upgraded from a 32-inch 720p TV, mm-hmm. and so now I'm rocking 49 inches of 1080p. Yeah. I have to sit <laughs> way further from the TV now. <laughs> you can. You can afford to. Yeah, I can, yeah. <laughs> you know. I, re- I like rearranged my entire apartment so mm-hmm. that I could be further from the TV. Mm-hmm. Same here. I um, The the stand that it used to be on was um, not very high off the ground, maybe two feet. We put it on a stand now that's about four feet off the ground, so it's just leaning down on us. <laughs> You know, it's very oppressive and... Uh, it's looking down on you like yeah, like Snoke from uh, <laughs> Star Wars. Very so, much what, so. What are you playing on that giant TV? Uh, well, I uh, had gotten back into um, Fallout 4. Some DLC came out and I got into a beta for another DLC that sparked my um, kind of interest in that game again. Um, I played a little bit of Zombie. Yeah, and, how, uh, how did you like it? You know, it's got like a really good feel to the game, but the combat is just so... Well, I mean, um, it was a Wii U game. But even still, uh, there's no excuse. I mean, you know, you hold the the left trigger to prime your weapon, and then um, the right trigger shoots or hits. It's just one hit animation over and over and over just like, yeah hey, yeah hey, yeah i suppose hey, like after playing know. dying light and then mm-hmm. trying to go back to that or any game i mean mix it up <laughs> any game <laughs> you know mix it up a little bit et for atari just... yeah i could see if it was like like a daisy or something where there aren't a tremendous amount of animations because the game has a lot going on but this doesn't really have that i um, mean for my understanding and i haven't played it since it was brand new on the wii u and it was I mean, the Wii U had some pretty cool launch titles. Mm-hmm. TBH. I really, <laughs> I really did like Zombie U, yeah. and I don't remember it being about combat so much as trying to avoid combat and trying to like 
scrounge supplies mm-hmm. and stuff like that because that's more of like my style. Mm-hmm. Well, there's an element right in the beginning uh, when you're learning the mechanics and setting up like your initial base or whatever where a horde breaks in and you gotta like fight six to nine zombies, I think. Do they still have the element where they'll download other people's deaths and then just randomly insert them into your game? I don't know. I mean, I know it, it's based on the element that the character you're playing when you die and then restart as a different character, you'll see that previous right. character right um and he'll have the backpack on with all of your junk in right there, but um so if you want to get your stuff back you've got to go hunt yeah the zombie version of you down and yeah. get your stuff back which is a super cool touch it is although every dead body i've come across that i can loot have been empty most items chests they're all empty I don't know what to really expect as far as like what you could find because there isn't any crafting element to the game. So in uh, Zombie U, they had an online component where like a really high experienced, you know, super far into the game player would die mm-hmm. and then they would put their zombie version into your game randomly. Mm-hmm. It was really difficult and frustrating, but like if you could bring them down, you would get so much good stuff. Yeah, that is cool. What about you? What have you been playing? I started with with uh, Battlefront. Of course. I have the season pass, and season pass holders got the first DLC two weeks early, Mm -hmm. and that coincided with my birthday Mm -hmm. and me getting that TV. (laughs) And so when that happened, I got to play the new DLC on my new TV. Nice. And from there, I started just popping in old games and seeing you know how they looked and how they played and and whatever. We got back into Diablo three. I level capped my fifth character. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Josh likes playing Diablo 3 when Mandy's drunk. That's really good I wasn't damn. drunk. I was tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember I, I was playing and I'm like, everything is spinning. And you're like, you could you could still play Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> it's I only had two glasses of wine. It's not like I was drunk. Mm-hmm. If you're drunkenly playing Diablo, that's on you. <laughs> we are playing Diablo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, but then I started playing Disgaea 5 again because I had gotten into the third chapter and then just kind of put it down. And that's kind of what I always do with Disgaea games. I get to a certain point and then Mm -hmm. put it down and then just pick it up later. Uh, It's a great series to do that with because all of your progress saves Mm -hmm. and you can make a lot of progress. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, you can level up a character to 9,999. And so, you know, I had been working on all these characters before and then you can play until a game over and then you have to start the story over, but all of your characters retain all of their progress. Oh, okay. That's the thing I like to do is when I, because I've forgotten the first part of the story, I just like find a spot where I can, you know, have a game over and then see the bad ending and Mm -hmm. then start over, but keep my entire party and all of my stuff. Mm -hmm. The second time through, it's super easy because you've gained all of these levels and all of these new skills and everything. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm having a ton of fun with it and I really, really like it. Like that you're playing Disgaea on your giant TV yeah. while games. It's like one of those things people on the internet would do where they take like a screenshot from Halo 5 and then a screenshot from Disgaea 5 and be like, look at PS4 exclusives versus Xbox One exclusives. The graphics just can't compare. The PS4 can't compare to the Xbox? or the Yeah, Xbox? I mean, I'm assuming... I haven't played Halo 5, but I'm assuming it, it, it looks more this guy, polished than this guy. Yeah, 5. this guy 5 games look pretty dated. I mean, I think mm-hmm. they deliberately look like PS2 games. Are those PlayStation exclusives? Yeah. Okay. Um, some of them are on PC now, but... Uh-huh. Oh, well, so that's the same thing for most Xbox ex- exclusives going forward. They'll be on PC. But yeah, people really like to... Especially, I think, um, with the PS4 and the Xbox One, there's just been this huge sort of debate about the graphics. Look at I me! Mean, look at the fucking graphics on the PS4. Do you remember Grassgate? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we talked about that yeah, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, there were just comparison videos for like MGS5, Xbox One, 360, PS3, and PS4. It's like it's comparisons. I mean, the PS4 is shitting all over the Xbox and. I, I remember okay. one that was uh, Skyrim on Xbox 360, Skyrim on PS3, and it was, you know, the same shot, essentially. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Skyrim on PC, and it had, you know, some character with huge pink pigtails and a bikini. <laughs> and... 
<laughs> a lot of those shots will like deliberately like do some motion shot and like things will be kind of blurry and they'll pick a place where it's really dark and then they'll find like the most beautiful location and do a still perfect frame shot to like prove the graphics are better. It's like you could probably actually make that point if you went for the same image, but right. mm -hmm. they go too far and then the only point they're making is that they're super into console wars. Yeah, console wars, it's weird. I mean, I guess I don't really get them. Um, if now, you go on N4G or like NeoGAF a lot, like you just see the people that all they want to do is comment and make alternate names for consoles like mm -hmm. there we had we had one commenter on on a site who was like you're into the popper station four <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should have called it the popper station four <laughs> <laughs> right well i you know i remember when i was a kid it was because i was i had an nes i was never going to get a sega genesis because mm -hmm. i had a nintendo mm -hmm. Like, you know, this money doesn't grow on trees. These things are expensive toys. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get one. So it wasn't so much that, you know, you didn't like right. Genesis or you didn't like Nintendo. It was like, this is what I have. So I have to convince myself as much as anyone that this is the best. You yeah. had a Nin peasant dough. I, I did like some <laughs> of the PS3. Don't. has no game jokes. Last gen. And I owned a 360 and a PS3. Last gen. But some of them were just so funny. Like, I remember seeing a comic somebody made with Dale Gribble from King of the Hill and he's like Nancy said she was going over to Dale Redcord's house to play PS3 which is suspicious because the PS3 has no games <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there were some clever ones I, I enjoyed those jokes yeah well I think this would be a good place to call for a break before we really get into a, a bare knuckle a slobber knocker, um, <laughs> as it were. Slobber, slobber knocker. Um, that's for the ref. I'd also like to thank um, Wheelie, 2XAA. Of course, you can find this podcast on RetroVolve.com, where you'll also find a, a, a slew of articles. You can also find us on HalfBlastGaming.com, where you can get a detailed list of all of the um, games that we talk about on each and every show. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Um, so when we come back from the break, we're going to get into a discussion about console wars. All right, we're back from the break. Now... In the early days of consoles, there were just so many of them that it brought the industry to its knees. Then Nintendo came around. A knight in shining armor. Well, I think... And resurrected from the ashes! <laughs> <laughs> I think I think most people are familiar with at least the basics of the story. You sure. know, the video game crash it's, happens. It's... it's... Julian's storytelling of this. Well, and I, you know, it's ruined now, but... It's about uh, how it's told. Yeah, yeah right. No, I, I ruined it specifically <laughs> because fuck Julian. Um, so Nintendo comes around. They're kicking ass. Sega comes out. Um, they're kind of fondling butts. They're not really violently <laughs> attacking... They're not really violently attacking They're, they're trying to kick butts, but it's an awkward fondle. Yeah, you know, they got sandals on they're not really kicking anything at this point and then I mean, and for me i mean that's sort of where this council war idea perhaps originated i don't know i mean you got two competing companies kind of going at it I, I don't know i guess was it a graphical thing was it a games thing i mean what, what was driving this war part of it was just the idea of trying to compete with nintendo in the first place mm -hmm. I had a very positive opinion of Nintendo in my youth, and I've learned as an adult that they were terrible. They were the worst. Yeah. Once uh, everybody else dropped out of the business and it was just Nintendo, mm -hmm. they worked really hard to make sure it was just Nintendo for as long as they could yeah. really muster. Um, they had all these agreements with companies where they could, if they wanted to have their game on Nintendo, they couldn't be on other systems. Mm -hmm. And then they got charged with violating antitrust laws. <laughs> And so Sega had a system before the Genesis, but it wasn't very successful. They could hardly get any games. Mm -hmm. But at the time of the Genesis, 
now that Nintendo couldn't pull their illegal shenanigans in America, they really had a chance of making a dent there. So um, they brought in Michael Katz, who at the time was probably one of the most experienced people in the video game market- marketing industry. He'd been working in video game marketing since 1977. Okay. Uh, he'd, he worked with Mattel back when everybody was making a video game system and Mattel had some too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he worked for Coleco, he worked for Atari, and then they brought him in for Sega. Mm-hmm. And so he was the one who coined the Sega does what Nintendo and Genesis does what Nintendo taglines and really kicked off the console wars. And Sega fired him for oh, this wow. because Sega of Japan was really bothered by this. They hated the competitive advertising. Mm-hmm. They're like, we don't want that. And so they fired him and they wow. brought in somebody else to replace him. But the advertising had already proved to be pretty successful. And yeah. I think there were a lot of people in America who had really negative, genuine negative feelings over Nintendo because because all of these people had worked for other video game companies and mm-hmm. had to try to get stores to even stock their game. And then they were like, oh, we can't because Nintendo will stop sending us games and we won't make yeah. money. And all the illegal stuff that Nintendo had been doing. And so they had so much bad blood that I think people genuinely wanted to go after Nintendo at Sega. And then the audience responded so positively to it. And mm-hmm. they had to keep it up. So they're duking it out. Does Sega ever get close to edging in on their market share? Oh, or- yeah. I mean. Sega did with the Genesis at least maybe not any other Sega system but Mm. I mean not the Sega CD you think the Sega CD sold well enough (laughs) <laughs> that, was, that was a joke. Oh, I was, I was really confused. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the Sega CD probably did really well. Did you mention it? Yeah. No, so, I was like, what the fuck are you no, talking about? I was about? really confused because I didn't <laughs> like, think that was d- right. N- no. <laughs> I mean, do we have numbers? Nintendo sold 49.1 million Super Nintendo consoles and the Genesis sold 29 million units. And I mean, that seems really bad, but you have to look at the position that mm-hmm. Sega was in, that mm-hmm. anybody trying to compete with Nintendo. Nintendo was in at the beginning of the run and I mean that was really impressive and I think people saw them as a competitor I think people thought it was closer than it was Mm -hmm. too. My understanding at least in part is that uh, when the Genesis came out it was at the tail end of the uh, original NES's run Mm -hmm. so in part they were like trying to compete against the NES which you know, had been around for a while. Mm-hmm. So that may have been part of the, the early startup numbers. Like once Nintendo started doing the, uh, the Super NES, then they started picking up more sales, mm-hmm. leading eventually to, uh, the Sega Saturn, which was made to compete against the Super Nintendo. And then somebody was like, so what about this PlayStation? Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't like that because <laughs> Sega and, and Sony were originally working together. Oh, uh, okay. Nintendo and Sony. Yeah, but Sega and Sony, too. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, Sony was jumping around with everybody. <laughs> Sony. Just a regular old woman you know, of the night. But, uh, Sony is allowed to advance its reputation in whatever way it wants, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How yeah. late into the game did Genesis come out? It was in 1988 okay. when the Genesis came out. And then when did the Super Nintendo come out? 1991. 1990 in Japan. So it was a few years beforehand. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, they had, if, if not initially, um, eventually position themselves as like what like the faster machine blast processing which the funny thing about blast processing is that it it's not a thing Mm -hmm. it refers to the faster processor Mm -hmm. that the genesis uses Mm -hmm. it has no bearing on anything but Blast processing sounds interesting. Sounds cool. That's for yeah, sure. Right. Just blast processing you know, all over my face. S- Super Nintendo doesn't have a Bukaki reference yeah. in their marketing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, like, you know, it was a thing. Like, my system has blast processing. Yours doesn't. Yeah. And I mean, Sonic just kind of had like an edge to him. Sonic felt faster mm-hmm. than the Mario games. Mm-hmm. And it, it's funny. Somebody actually like did the pixel by pixel counting of each level and etc uh you know counted speed run times and figured out that if you calculated it in real world distances mario was faster in his first game than sonic was in his first game 
Sonic Which, wasn't all that fast in his no. first game. No. It's clumsy, too. Yeah. But, like, the way they set up the level and, you know, the way they did the pacing, it felt really fast. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, you had this game that felt really fast and blast processing. And so, you know, clearly this is a faster, better unit. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, gotta go blast. Right. <laughs> Go blast or go home. <laughs> right? Once you so, go blast, you never go back. Even the creation of Sonic was a huge nightmare. Japan had really weird ideas about mm-hmm. what they wanted Sonic to be. They had a mascot contest of Sega in Japan among their employees, and the winner was a little hedgehog named Mr. Needlemouse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so Sega of America like hated that thing from the beginning, and they were just dreading having to work with Mr. Needlemouse. And so they complained a little bit Sega Japan and so they went and retooled it and they came out with came back with Sonic who is a blue hedgehog with a guitar and a blonde girlfriend named Madonna yeah. <laughs> and like their idea was sort of that Mario seems like he'll be friends with anybody and like any kid can have Mario be his friend and that's part of the appeal but they wanted Sonic to have it but also make him seem like a little cooler <laughs> so he'd be friends with you but maybe not that kid you don't like down there <laughs> and uh so that was their whole aim is to like try to capture that sort of mickey mouse every man appeal and then edge it up just a little bit mm-hmm. and i mean in the 90s for sure it worked in focus testing even kids who owned nintendo systems overwhelmingly preferred sonic to mario um in 1996 which is a little later into this lifespan uh one survey came back and seven out of ten kids said they liked sonic more than mario mm-hmm. and when you look at how much more successful well, Nintendo systems really mm-hmm. were. Well, I think because they were developing Sonic to actually have character, whereas Mario had absolutely none. Well, Mario is, is a Mickey Mouse, and he is to this day, and that's why he's endured. But yeah. You know, he, he had... slowly gained a personality. Yeah, I mean, he was... Ridiculous nature, but when you look back at Mario 1, I mean, he was just... Well, the original character. Mario Brothers. Yeah, I, I suppose, but even still, like, maybe he'll have a goofy look on his face on the side of the cabinet. But I mean, the guy didn't have much dialogue. He didn't say it's a me, and he, you know, he wasn't in love with lasagna at the time you know <laughs> so you could see why, garfield you know, he's a no no and, and mario 64 if mario yeah. falls asleep he dreams of lasagna yeah. really yeah, yeah. He'll, if, if his idol animation is him falling asleep and going mm, lasagna mm-hmm. really i didn't yeah. know that mm-hmm. and in the, i remember uh, peach was baking him a cake he's in the, cheat, cheating on her cake with his lasagna yeah and it's scandalous i in mean the, it really he, he it's a lasagna cake <laughs> in the d commercial that's d i C D, I don't know. Uh, the the it's Deke tel- because Deke. they said it at the end of every Sailor Moon oh, yeah. right. episode. Deke. The the Deke uh, cartoon show, Super Mario Brothers. You know they were always talking about pasta and lasagna and mm-hmm. shit. So all they knew about Italians. Yeah, right. No, they, they totally eat was. pasta. The Italians like pasta. That's what they know. Some mean. of them are plumbers. And and also <laughs> they poop. I'm sure they have plumbers <laughs> over there. <laughs> Not, not only that, the Sonic Sat AM cartoon show was like a thousand times better than the Mario Brothers cartoon show. I remember, mm-hmm. like, well, I didn't have TV when the Sonic cartoon show was on. Mm-hmm. I didn't have TV for almost my entire childhood. The and I never had a Sega system, so I never latched onto Sonic. So anybody liking Sonic feels really weird to me. That could explain the emotional resonance that you have when you watch the Muppets. <laughs> uh, it's just so powerful and overwhelming. It's the first time you've seen it right yeah. i had a vcr <laughs> i just didn't have like tv stations no the uh the saturday morning cartoon show known now as sonic sat am that's what they started calling it the second season uh it was you know like sonic and a group of freedom fighters uh trying to hold out in the forest against the ever uh industrializing dr robotnik yeah it had a like a very dystopian feel yeah i really did and so you know like there were these power rings that occasionally give Sonic a boost up and it was just interesting show and I saw the cartoon show long before I ever played any uh, Sonic game and I was always really disappointed that the games were nothing like this show. Mm-hmm. I remember one episode they're like sneaking through the vents like a la Die Hard. Like. Right. And yeah there was one character that had like gotten rescued just as the roboticizing process had happened so she has like a metal arm and leg. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then they, there's like another version. There, there's there is that was, like, that was ridiculous. Yeah. It was it was
was a lot like Teen Titans Go in in the how they told whatever episode story they had. Mm-hmm. In both cartoons, Sonic was voiced by Jaleel White, which is entertaining. He he did uh, Urkel in Family Matters. For yeah. those of you who don't know the name, you know, did he do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did that. I just I have no affection for Sonic, so really only associate Sonic with creepy Sonic fans. <laughs> did I go fast? <laughs> There was some guy in high school who had a crush on me, and he told me I reminded him of Amy Rose, and, like, that's the number one thing I think of for Sonic. I think, oh, gross. That guy who said I reminded him of Amy Rose, which I think is just because she was a girl in Sonic, and he liked Sonic. <laughs> well, that's all the boy knew. This is a high school student. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like once the um, market moved on to, like, the PlayStation, that era of, of the consoles, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like the marketing style, marketing, they weren't, like, trying to market any kind of competition that's not true like the the ps4 built its entire campaign around the, what you remember the e3 presentation yeah, where this Xbox is how you trade wrong. games oh, on right. the ps4 and they just had the guy walk mm-hmm. up and give the guy the game right so not but, i mean i don't even like console wars stuff no. and they killed it they no, killed you're, that you're right. happy. so then eventually when sony did get into the game um, double crossed, um, bad feelings from Nintendo. They literally were going to war, as evidenced by their Crash Bandicoot advertising, where he's literally calling out Nintendo in their goddamn parking lot. Yeah, he's Crash Bandicoot in the parking lot of of um, Nintendo of America Corporation, and he's got his bullhorn and yeah. he's like yelling at them, and then he gets like <laughs> escorted away by the police. Yeah, it's insane. You know, so it, it kind of starts, you know, Nintendo is up here and you got these guys coming in, trying to take the back door, reach around and, uh, <laughs> you know. And, Let's see how many uh, <laughs> euphemisms in. You know, and, they're fumbling and uh, trying to chip away at what would be perceived as the giant. Right. I mean, they're literally going to war. And literally. Literally. You know, they got fatigues on. Right. You know, they're building up their armies with tanks. They're in trenches. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, they're entrenched. Calling, they're calling Mandy for good strategy <laughs> to go forward. Yeah. Learning the terrain. But for me, personally, it sort of seemed like the PlayStation came out and it was like, okay, we're here now. You know, the 64 was fun and had some fun games on it, but it always still felt like a remnant of this older age that the PlayStation was like light years ahead of more adult cd based man all right know? um and that the games couldn't compete because they were of a different nature i mean um, i remember sega running anti-playstation tv ads for sure mm-hmm. see i it's don't like saturn i yeah yeah i don't remember that I mean, it had less of an impact on me apparently mm-hmm. once well, that I think started it's happening the nature of the sega like, saturn. i mean you probably it's because we were all in elementary school and everybody was fighting over sega versus nintendo and right. then we aged out of it a little bit yeah, I think, yeah, it was like Sega was like, it. okay, see you later, I'm going home, and Nintendo was like, you know, we're still setting the trends, and the PlayStation was like, I don't think so, uh, that's just rad what we're doing here, and then they're like, oh, okay. It did feel like the PlayStation was a cut up, like, it wasn't on the same level as mm-hmm. N64, I, I, I agree, it did feel like a different thing, and... Sega at that point doesn't factor into my like I know they have the right. Saturn and I know then they have the Dreamcast right. uh, and the Dreamcast I am now like now understanding was way ahead of its time in mm-hmm. terms of what it did as a console mm-hmm. and and from what I understand the Sega Saturn was a really good system they had a that Magic was, Knight Rare game that was released in the US they had one of those and now I, now I want one more than ever uh, but you know it yeah. had the misfortune of being made again to fight Nintendo, and then here was Sony was the PlayStation. Well, but I guess the question is, how much of the, the, did Nintendo feed into this console war during the whole Genesis kind of era? I don't really recall there being... There's one thing I saw and this is so rare to see from Nintendo in a Nintendo Power magazine where they were doing a hot and not list in the back of the magazine and on the not list they put Final Fantasy 7. <laughs> <laughs> and that's so uncharacteristic. But right. Nintendo was, I mean, super shady. You know, mm-hmm. their, their gangster past was very much a part <laughs> of their dealings. But Nintendo yeah. very much tried to give the impression of oh we're above all this and right. i mean in the late 90s they had the get in or get out marketing and stuff like that but mm-hmm. they still weren't specifically they weren't calling, calling out, out. they weren't shot calling but you know nintendo did shadier stuff than any of these companies but mm-hmm. they very much tried to give the impression of being above it all yeah and that's definitely how i thought i thought you know mean sega picking on nintendo and uh sega trying to get back at this bunch of jerks who mm-hmm. are keeping exactly. who are literally breaking yeah. the law yeah and i think 
think so once the 64 came out and then going forward it was like nintendo was just playing nintendo's game you know they didn't really comment necessarily too much uh here and there really negatively about anybody it was just like yeah, okay you're over there making noise we're nintendo here right you know we're on the nintendo lane Slow and, and steady wins the race right know? and and you know at this point as long as they're not doing stupid stuff which they've been doing a lot of lately but like <laughs> as long as they're not doing stupid stuff like everyone's gonna buy a nintendo console and a handful of games mm -hmm. because it's the new legend of zelda i want to play the new mario etc etc mm -hmm. i mean that's that's not really working with the wii u and, well like i said they've been doing some really stupid oh, no, stuff lately to make Wii U games. Um, so, <laughs> um, Sega kind of falls off. They start doing just the game element. They're not really making consoles anymore. Yeah. Um, Nintendo's doing their own thing. Um, Sega's uh, deal that they had with Sony that Sony backed out of was that they were going to co-develop the hardware and split the losses mm -hmm. on it so that they could afford to have a higher loss percentage and then split sales on profits of software. Mm -hmm. So both Sega and Sony. So, I mean, that would have been the greatest console. Yeah. I mean, that would have been a Nintendo killer. So that was before Nintendo started working with Sony to try to do the It's hard NES, to find specific dates. I get the impression, honestly, reading interviews that maybe Sony was putting out feelers with a lot of companies mm -hmm. because a lot of this stuff seems to have been happening at the same time. And so then they're doing the NES PlayStation, and then NES basically pulls the rug out from underneath Sony. I think at a press conference and announces teaming up with what? Uh, Philips. Philips, the CDI, the basically, CDI. which is how they got the rights to those Zelda games. Yep. And then Nintendo felt kind of burned there because they, they were lost terrible control. Games. And I mean, that makes me think that Nintendo backed out because they found out they were trying to work out deals with Sega at the same mm -hmm. time. And then Sony was like, forget this. Yeah, I'm so... i going to go it alone like a My Little Pony. <laughs> then right before, right, you got the PS1 out, but then Sega does do the Dreamcast, which is a, a great console. Oh, I love my Dreamcast. And it sold relatively well, but then PS2 was announced... And basically introduces DVDs almost single-handedly to the Japanese culture um, to be able to play DVDs on this system. Fucking like, are you kidding me? Yeah, that's why I got one. Well, DVDs were actually selling in Japan before they even sold in the U.S. The first DVD pay player was released in Japan in 1996. But yeah, the PS2 helped the DVD market there, and I'm sure it helped PS2 sales as well. And then uh, the PS2 is pretty much large and in charge. Microsoft kind of says, hey, wait a second. We got this box over here. It's got an X on it. <laughs> we're going to release this goddamn thing. And we're getting in on this console war. And now you got Sony. Now you got Microsoft. They're going at it. And now you got Halo. They had, uh, Bioware was exclusively developing for Xbox. Really? Back in, back in the early yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they, they had Coder, Knights of the Old Republic. Jade Empire? Yeah, Jade, Jade Empire. Jade Empire was a pretty solid game. I, I, I owned every single console from mm -hmm. the sixth generation, Dream, if Dreamcast included. Mm -hmm. That's the only generation where I've owned every console. So I had a GameCube, I had a PS2, I had an Xbox. Mm -hmm. And no, I mean Xbox wasn't really a competitor at that point in time mm -hmm. because the library was so small. But it was a really interesting console. It, it felt very much like a PC gaming console. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Which made it feel really different. And I, that's like my favorite generation because I feel like every console had such a different vibe. But they shared so many games. They did, they you did. Know. But you know, even some of the big cross-platform games like Soul Cal had their little gimmicks. Yeah. And yeah. everyone would fight over which version of Soul Cal was better. It was GameCube. Mm -hmm. But PS2 <laughs> that, controller was Was that the, the one with one. uh with that you Link. could play Zelda? Or Link. 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 Yeah. Link, yeah, yeah. What was it on the PlayStation? Was it Spawn? It was Heihachi one? and it was Spawn was on Xbox. Xbox, right. Okay. Heihachi from Tekken. So yeah. PlayStation got raw deal, but they had the best controller for playing Soul Cal for sure. Yeah. I mean the original Xbox controller before the controller that people think of. I owned an Xbox early enough that I own this, and it is the worst video game controller it's ever such a used. Huge... And I have a Dreamcast, yeah. so I had an N64, but it was a beast. It was like, if you have small hands, it was just hard to play. And yeah. probably in about 2003, 2004, so pretty early into the Xbox lifespan, they came out with a better version of their controller. Mm -hmm. And you know, I feel like people generally like the Xbox, but it just wasn't a true competitor until mm -hmm. the next generation. 
till the 360 comes out. And I mean, Sony screwed up massively, which yeah. is great for them. And I mean, so did Microsoft, but Sony screwed up worse. So mm-hmm. well, and the 360 came out first, right? You know, and then they had um, the was it a Medal of Honor or was that a Call of Duty launch title on that? I had it. I had a 360 really close to launch, but I didn't play Call of Duty, Call of Duty so um, I don't remember. But that was what everybody I knew was playing. It was uh, Call of Duty 2, which is one of the only Call of Duty games I've never played. I was playing Dead or Alive in view of Pinata. To each their own, man. <laughs> Good games. <laughs> no, they are, for sure. I um, mean, because Xbox had Rare at that point in time now, and yep. I mean, it didn't pan out, but it seemed like it was going to at the time. Well, what was that one? Um, Viva Pinata! No, the other other one um the girl who could turn into beasts cameo cameo i have was i have never ready? owned yeah, okay, was a... cameo a launch title no i'm not saying a launch title i'm saying just in, as a in general for i actually feel like cameo might have been a launch title yeah cameo was a launch title for the xbox 360 i've never owned a microsoft console mm-hmm. i um you know i have ps2 still mm-hmm. have that uh but about that time like Life situations happened where I just I wasn't going to get a console, mm-hmm. uh, and by the time I could start playing video games again, you know, I had a computer, and that's what I play games on. Well, for me, it was like I had the PS2. It was starting to peter out a little bit. The 360 had been out for a while, um, and then I saw Assassin's Creed, and I said, all right, on, jump ship. There hasn't been a lot of games on now on any console, but at the time, you know, on, on Xbox, mm-hmm. uh, that was like, yes, I have to play that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, no, the games I really want to play are on the PS2. Um, so I, I crossed enemy lines. I was, a, I was a Nintendo guy growing up. PlayStation came out. I was a PlayStation guy. Yeah. Xbox 360 came out. All of a sudden, I'm waving the green banner. <laughs> and I got to admit, I kind of felt like a little cool for a little bit there, you know, when it seemed like the 360 was just like leaps and bounds uh, better than everything PlayStation was doing at the time. And I was kind of like, see yeah, the thing? I had no doubt that any game coming out was going to be on the 360 unless it was a Sony original, you know. And Well, unless you like Japanese games. The Which thing I, that... But Microsoft also had an exclusive deal with uh, Sakaguchi, who, mm-hmm. the father of Final Fantasy, to mm-hmm. develop games for Xbox systems. He made Lost Odyssey, which mm-hmm. is amazing and he made Blue Dragon, which is kind of mediocre. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems like there's so much revisionist history with the Xbox 360 PS3 generation because Xbox 360, in the end, sold the least units. Mm Mm-hmm. Like the Wii was selling more than the 360 in oh, the yeah. beginning, and oh, it, yeah. it was until well, it's to casuals, Josh. It doesn't count. Exactly. Right? That's why I think the revisionist idea factors in is that they don't consider that a legitimate count. And I think but the also, 360 was more successful in North America. It's that they failed globally. The very end of that generation, the PS3 got ahead of the 360 in, in units. Mm-hmm. Some numbers will actually show that the 360 was ahead of the PS3 overall, but the PS3 stopped reporting numbers two years before the 360 did, so that sort of makes it hard to determine who is actually ahead. My personal theory is that Microsoft kept reporting 360 numbers until they'd passed last announced PS3 numbers, and that once they hit that point, they're like, yeah, we can we can stop putting out numbers now. That was worldwide, and it you know, it had a lot to do with the fact that the Xbox 360 was very unpopular in Japan and mm-hmm. things yeah, like yeah. that. And, and the PS3 had a longer lifespan. I mean, there were still brand new PS3 games coming out last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are still games coming out for the PS3. And that's even true for the 360. There's still more games coming out, but it looks like there's a lot more coming out on the PS3, especially as we get into the second half of 2016. So right. there, there's still an incentive if you're not a person who cares about being super up to date with things to go buy a PS3 and play games for it. I think also for the 360, Call of Duty and the Madden series really factored into its popularity. Yeah. So much so that you could almost say that most of the people that probably played on those 360, those games on 360, those were the only games they played. So they may have had like a larger you know, install base or whatever they say, but... Yeah, and, that, and then that leads to games like Titanfall becoming an Xbox One exclusive, and then nobody buys an Xbox One. And, uh... Strangely, uh, the Xbox One actually has a slightly higher attach rate hmm. than PS4, but I think, and it's very small, it's less than one game. 
per uh, owner, but I think it's because the default console to buy is the PS4. So mm-hmm. the one or two games a year guys buy a PS4 now. And the only people yeah. who buy Xbox Ones are the people who really like gaming on Xbox. Yeah, I mean, when it was announced, both 4 and the 1 are coming out. You know, I have a 360 and I'm thinking, well, it's a no-brainer. I'm going to get the Xbox One. And then I was one of those guys who was watching those press conferences at E3, and I'm just like, oh, man, but, but, oh, man, what? Oh, man, but I want the Xbox One because I have a 360, and I got a PS4 now. Actually, yeah. Check out Microsoft, Microsoft made a lot of mistakes in, mm-hmm. in the early Xbox One life, lifespan, mm-hmm. and even, like, before launch, and they reversed a lot of their bad decisions. But like, Almost all of them. Right, but, like... All of them. <laughs> in the beginning it was just like they would announce like oh this cool feature blah 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 and everyone would be like ah and i don't want that and and it comes with a connect right and it's always on and it's drm <laughs> and your mother is gonna be dating us for a while you know, it's like i don't what <laughs> mom <laughs> You know, where are the fucking games? You know, I mean... You know, I've I've only been paying attention since about 2011. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, really hardcore paying attention. But, like, since 2011, Sony... When you look at a, a Sony E3 press conference, Sony's going to be like, here are the games that yeah. we're making. Mm-hmm. Here are the games. Here are the games. Here are the games. Yep. Microsoft is taking the approach of like oh here's how you can integrate our console into your everyday life here's mm-hmm. how you can watch tv on our console mm-hmm. here's how you can blah, blah blah and it's like well i have a tv mm-hmm. i have a cable box i don't need to watch tv on an yeah. xbox like i don't do you want to pet a digital tiger <laughs> here we go yeah. but i think they sort of made the same mistakes that nintendo made with this generation like mm-hmm. really gambling on people wanting something they didn't actually want I mean, even the names, they made similar mistakes for similar reasons because the Xbox One, which is a dumb name, Mm -hmm, was called the Xbox One because it was Xbox Mm all-in-one, everything in one console. And, you know, the Wii U. Yeah, the Wii U is so badly named. Uh, The original concept of the Wii was it was something that your family could play together. And so it was, you know, we, like, we, like us. You know, we and then the two eyes in we were supposed to be like two players like playing together. And then the Wii U it was supposed to be for like a more hardcore crowd. And in the beginning, they were talking about games like Arkham City and Zombie U. And I think they even mentioned Assassin's Creed. Like these are the games you're going to get to play on the Wii U. This this is a hardcore console, and so. It's we, you, because this is a console for you, the hardcore gamer. I was actually at E3 when they announced that. I was at Nintendo's press conference that year, and there was an audible groan in the room when they announced that name and they gave their their uh, reason behind that name. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anyway, we were talking about the Xbox One, not the Wii U. The Xbox One really isn't that bad a console if what you want is an all-in-one media device. But... Or you want a console that talks to you and <laughs> yeah. you can talk to you. Yeah, but I'm not sure how big the audience actually is for that. It, it, but I do think it, it almost seemed like they were going after like Apple. There's actually there's a video on online somewhere of me at Microsoft's press conference. Of in, you? Yeah, in okay. 2012. And it's a guy from, I can't remember what outlet he was from. And he was just, he had his camera and he was interviewing people. And he's like, so what are you hoping to see uh, today? And I was like, I hope I don't have to look at the freaking Connect." And he's like, well, too bad. And he like pans the camera over and there's like the centerpiece of the stage is the Connect, And yeah. I'm just like, son, like, I think you just hear me like not, like I'm not, my face isn't on the camera, but you just hear in the background me go, son of a bitch. <laughs> 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 it's good. Yeah, I mean, it's true. It's like the that's the problem was it was like they were offering so many things that I didn't want and I didn't want to pay for. Right, they were more expensive than the PS4. Yeah, and uglier. I mean, and and the benefit of the all in one devices is that they fit in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're portable. A, a home console is not a portable thing. Mm-hmm. No, so, and the like, Xbox One is bigger than the PS4. By and large. It's yeah, I mean, large. the Xbox One is huge. Right. Huge. It's 
basically bigger than the Xbox. You know, it's one of the biggest... <laughs> I, I think it is bigger than the Xbox. I think it's one of the biggest game consoles I've ever seen. It does yeah. have it does have the thing where you can like easily pop out the hard drive and replace it, which yeah, is... No, I, I wish PS4 they had that, had that on the PS4. Well, but can't you just go external? You, plug you, in an you external can't, I don't drive? think it's that hard to replace the hard drive on the PS4, but it's harder, mm-hmm. and so I haven't done it. I haven't run into really memory issues at all. Oh, I have. I you will. My games. You will. That I don't play. Get on. There. I, I didn't for a while and then I it got to me mm-hmm. I finally got rid of GTA 5 and mm-hmm. oh man I've had so much like just feel like I can finally stretch my legs mm-hmm. <laughs> I've just been playing my Vita lately which talk about console wars that Vita just yeah. came in and swept everything <laughs> you know like when, uh, all is Vita now <laughs> I know with Sega before they're trying to push the game gear they mm-hmm. took their American reps to a hostess club in Japan to try and like wine and dine them to get them to market the game gear and while the guy was at the hostess club he saw a some guy just playing a Game Boy, ignoring all the girls, and he was like, "Oh crap! How am I gonna sell the Game Gear?" Yeah. I mean, the Game Gear was better than the Game Boy, really, in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. except the software. Mm-hmm. But I and mean, the batteries. I mean, yeah. Try playing Link's Awakening. But I mean, when happen. you look at them side <laughs> by side, yeah, by far. I mean, just having colors, it's like, whoa, you know, it's a luxury. It's the sort of thing that looks like a home run in terms of marketing. Mm-hmm. But not so much in practice. Yeah, early Nintendo, man. You just could not fuck with those guys. They really well, were they, gangsters. They, they are. They are. They've lost their fighting spirit. Mm-hmm. Which they need to all grow beards yeah, and then like, Nintendo like got, will be back on top. It's like they got pants in the middle of gym class and <laughs> they just haven't been able to get back on that horse, you know? It's true. Nintendo is the little outcast kid who's actually got a lot of cool stuff, but he's really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, you want to go over to his house and like play with his cool stuff but then he's he's so annoying it's like oh Mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to play it that much Mm -hmm. his mom only makes tuna fish sandwiches you know (laughs) with like garlic in it so he always has really bad breath like oh (laughs) and you try you try you know you're like look man maybe you should just not wear that hairstyle you know and i'm gonna like it So what did we all learn here today? Nintendo (laughs) needs to get a DJ Qualls in New Kids style makeover. Okay, if Nintendo does that, they will win the console wars. Start a Mm -hmm. funk band. Yeah, and then I mean, what a, what a terrible movie! Dude. This isn't even a good movie. Why am I referencing <laughs> DJ Qualls for me from like 2000? I, I mean, does anybody even know who DJ Qualls is? I do. Yeah, but... I do too. He's in Zombie Nation or something. What yeah, what a, what a cool guy! Yeah. So, oh, okay. So the console wars, you know, we're familiar with them. We've lost a lot of lives, I think, over the years. Many um, Bothans have died. Yes. And uh, some of that, I think, was just people identifying with a brand and wanting to feel superior or cooler. And some of it is literally a guy out there in a T-shirt underneath a blazer talking about how great you know they are compared to the competitor or whatever. I've been on many sides in this war, in this fog of war, I think. Some of us have lost our identities and some of us have found truly what it is we're fighting for. So with that, I think we're going to wave the white flag bow out and uh i know i got some games i need to play today so half glass gaming out half glass gaming back in um i want to say um no, actually, I guess I don't have anything else to say. Half Glass Gaming out. <laughs> <laughs>